aking mind. Hello, mga pretty and handsome naming mga miners. We are here na naman ng aking partner para magbenta ng mga babtagi na OOTD for you all. Yeah, what do you want ba na onahin namin? Short. Dress. Or crop top. Okay, sure, shorts. Siyempre kami pa ba? Meron kami yan! We have short here. Marami, super. Let's make start now, partner. Okay, first item, short. Size 26-27. Get nyo na mga mare. Ang code natin for this short is Mine Sexy Me. Mine Sexy Me for only 100 pesos. Okay. Mine nyo na mga mare. Nice. Our first miner is Mare Marites. Yours na Mare Marites. Comment SB. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Yours na Mare Marites. Next item, partner. Here's the next item for our short is size 27 to 29. You heard it right, guys. 27 to 29. Kabugera talaga ang magbumay nito dahil super, super ganda ng quality ng short na to. Hindi kayo madadisappoint, guys. I promise. At dahil nabanggit ko ang word na kabugera kanina, ang code natin for the short is mind kabog. Like, literally, pasabog. Ganon. Mind kabog for only 100 pesos. And take note, guys. Stretchable siya. So, magkakasya talaga sa inyo po. Okay, yours na, Maring Marisol. Ikaw talaga napakabilis mo kaya gustong gusto kita eh. Okay, comment, screenshot doon. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. I think we have a lot of kita na partner. Yeah, you're right, partner. Let's make babay na to our miners. Babay for now, mga pretty at handsome naming mga miners. Let's make cut na this online selling dahil bukas is another day. Babay mga miners! See you ulit bukas! Hey partner! Nabilang ko na yung mga ibang perang kinita natin mula nung nakaraang nag-live selling tayo. And we have a lot of pera na hero! Oo, oo nga! Kaya niyo pa utang ni? Kasi I need money eh! Chari! Siyempre partner, oo naman! Sa aking play! Basta ibabalik mo rin agad ah! Magkano ba? What are we going to do with the pera pa? Can I make ipautang ba or ibili again ng products? Hmm, I have a bright idea, partner. What if ibangko natin yung mga money natin so that we can have an interest, right? That's a great idea, partner. Pero I don't know if paano magbank eh. Hala, partner. May problema pa pala tayo. Wala tayong alam sa pagbabanking. Ay, wait. Hmm. What if mag-browse muna ako sa TikTok ko and then mag-search tayo ng mga ideas? Di ba maraming videos there? Go, partner! in banking, this video is for you. One of the common questions a beginner in business ask is when to bank on banks. But first, let us define what is bank. A bank is a financial institution regulated at the federal level, state level, or both. Its primary role is to take deposits and make loans. But there are a wide range of products and services it offers, including the following. Banks, whether brick-and-mortar institutions or online, manage the flow of money between people and businesses. Specifically, banks offer deposit accounts that are secure places for people to keep their money. 
banks use the money in deposit accounts to make loans to other people and other businesses. In return, the bank receives interest payments on those loans from the borrowers. A part of that interest is then returned to the original deposit account holder in the form of interest, generally a savings account, money market account, or city account. Banks primarily make money on interest on loans and the fees they charge their customers. Now that we have defined what a bank is, the question is, when to bank on banks? When your company is at a turning point, whether you need to expand your business, increase the production, or iron out kinks on cash flow, you can count on a bank to lend you the capital you need to get through. Bank loans provide invaluable leverage for certain turning points to your enterprise. If you're a manufacturer, you can take out loans to maintain your inventory levels or buy new equipment. If you're a retailer, you can make loans to ease the crimp in your cash flow or bet on future growth. Banks offer a wide variety of terms from single-year short-term loans to longer-term loans stretched over 20 years. But banks don't make it easy for just anyone to waltz in and walk away with an instant working capital. That's because, on their point of view, a loan to your business is the same thing as gambling on your company's future. So, think about it! Types of Business Loans For almost every type of business, there's a different class of business loan. Loan products offered by banks fall into several distinct types with different advantages and drawbacks. Term loans are loans with a fixed maturity date and fixed interest rates, paid off in monthly or quarterly increments over a pre-arranged payment schedule. Businesses take out terms loans to finance acquisitions or expansions, or refinance existing debt. Loans with terms of more than 10 years long term can be collateralized by businesses' assets, with payments derived from profits or cash flow of the business. Term loans are ideal if you intend to borrow a large, fixed amount, but generally require collateral and strict approval procedures beforehand. Contracts for term loans may require the borrower to limit the amount of the future financial commitments or mint a percentage of the profit to repay the loan. Lines of credit are special type of loan that permits the borrower to draw as needed. The line of credit functions like an account that can be accessed as liquidity problems rise, making them ideal for companies that often face crowds with their cash flow. Depending on the terms, borrowers may be able to take out as much as they need, or only a certain portion at a certain time. Lines of credit may be secured by a mortgaged property, but the penalties may climb if you are unable to pay the minimum pre-arranged balance. Short-term loans are usually set to mature within a year. These loans paid in full at the end of the term, instead of through monthly payments, because short-term loans involve smaller-scale investments that deliver returns over a shorter period of time. Equipment financing is a type of loan that collateralizes the equipment tow bought by the loan. This type of loan involves significantly lower risk for the borrower, as you lose the equipment and not your business should you fail to repay the loan. Did you know that banks favor existing businesses? Many entrepreneurs assume it's difficult to qualify for a bank loan, and it's true banks present long list of requirements for potential borrowers. That's because banks need to be convinced that the business will be viable through the term of the loan that its management is competent enough to ensure profitability, and the debt will be paid as agreed. As a result, creditor banks require a great deal of financial disclosure and record keeping, which tends to scare off many would-be borrowers. On top of that, banks' requirements favor borrowers with a proven capacity to repay it meaning that existing businesses are favored over startups. growing, I have something to share with you. Are you an entrepreneur thinking a first-time bank loan and believe that the odds will be in your favor? Well, you are mistaken. Even the establishment with a proven track record, entrepreneurs thinking loans may face difficulties. Your business may come under friendly fire from banks seeking to reduce their risk exposure. 
Here are the following questions for yourself to change the odds in your favor. Question number one. Have you approached the right bank? Kapag mag approach ka ng banko, nasisigurado mo bang mapagkakatiwalaan sila? Let's say that your business is currently losing money and you need to get a loan to save your business. There are lots of scammers nowadays. Some banks may also take advantage on you. What if the bank you choose takes advantage on you since you need a loan or you desperately need a money? They will lend you pero kada buwan ay tumataas ng tumataas ang interest. Instead of saving your business, you will be lost more and you will be buried in debt or you will be on state of bankruptcy. It's better to find or approach the right bank because you can just get a loan easily especially when they found out that your business is at loss. They will take a survey or ask you a lot of questions if how much you earn month or how much is your monthly salary. They will ask you a question because it is also risky for them to lend you money immediately or get you a loan. If you have a friend at the specific bank you choose, you can ask help to put in a good word for you to make your bank loan easier. Question number two, do you have a business plan already? When it comes to preparing business plan, you should take the time to do so, hindi yung basta-basta gagawa ka lang nang wala yung sinasagawang pag-research. Because paano ka maa-assist ng banko kung wala kang kaalam-alam sa business mo at hindi mo alam kung paano i-manage? That's why it should be prepared with research and study your business. Because of this business plan, you may prove how much you like your business and how passionate you are to it. A good business plan will also serve as a tool to assist you in answering the potential question that loan officer may ask, as well as the risk and how you prepare your business. Loan officers are experienced bank staff who can verify your claims. However, be realistic in your expectation and ensure that all statements are backed up by data. Question number three, is the requested loan amount reasonable? When we apply for a loan for our business, we should only loan as much as the business needs. Because if your business income is good and your financial records are fine, but you loan a large amount of money, the bankers will be suspicious. Because as I said earlier, the bank will ask a lot of questions before granting your loan, including how much income you have so that they can estimate your ability to repay the loan. So no matter how much money you loan, the bank can still figure out how much money you truly need based on the business transaction and records. Question number four, do you believe in your business and does it shows? Having a positive attitude and believing in your business is a big factor for you to be approved by the bank, the way how confident you are to present to them but if you are nervous and have no belief that you will be able to show the bankers how much you love your business, the banker is unlikely to approve what you need from them. So when they're questioning you about your loan application, it's better to keep a pleasant attitude and respond boldly and appropriately. Don't show your bad attitude because it will affect the approval of your loan application. So number five. Did you get an expert look over a young contract? When it comes to contract negotiation, there should be a lawyer or expert who can advise you or explain to you well about the contract you will sign because it is risky. For example, you will sign the contract, you need a lawyer or they will look at your contract so that you can understand the terms of the contract that you will sign. If you don't have a lawyer, the banker can help you. Question number six, are you ready for the long haul? In the long haul, I know it's difficult to get a bank loan approved, especially if you're a first-timer. Dahil may chance or possibilities na hindi ka agad-agad ma-approve ng banko ang loan application mo because they'll consider factors such as monthly salary, what business you own, and how much money you make per month. So if your loan was denied because you didn't fulfill their loan terms, it is simply because the creditor sees you as a higher risk. To make things possible or if you want to take your chances in your favor, you must ask yourself this question first before you proceed to your next plan. 
it has to be taken seriously and you need to be wise enough to make all the possibilities in your favor. I hope you learned something from this video. See you on my next and trap talks with Anna. Bye. Hey guys, what's up? It's your entrepreneur Diana here. And today we're going to talk about the five C's of credit that the lender used to assess the client credit risk. Before you walk into a bank for a small business loan, make sure that you master the five C's of credit. Before a financial institution advances the credit to clients, they will assess your credit worthiness based on the information provided in the credit history. But first, before we jump into that, why nga ba important ang 5 C's of credit? So, the 5 C's of credit are the things that the bank or the lender analyze in your application to determine your overall ability to afford the loan that you want to take. Alright, so the first C is capital. The lender is looking for some skin in the game. So, if you're new to start a business, they can be looking for between 10 to 30% equity injection to your business. This refers to the client network and its total asset. This questions if, does the applicant have many assets within the business or outside it? Because assets show how invested you are in the success of the business, which potential creditors appreciate. This way, the bank alternatively may want to resort to repayment through your assets, real estate, or equipment if you can play up. They sometimes call it down payment. It is the amount of money that you have that you're gonna contribute into the property cost. Typically, the larger your down payment, the better. Because pretty much more down payment means less mortgage, less risk. Second C is capacity. That is gonna be your ability to pay back the loan. It refers the, to the ability of the client to repay the loan to the lenders. Can you afford the payment? that you're looking to pay or does the applicant have sufficient ability to repay the loan of course a potential creditor bank want proof that you can repay the loan for the duration of the term so they will order a full review of your financial statements and personal finances lenders look at revenue expenses cash flow and your payment timing in your business plan. They also look at your business and personal credit reports as well as credit scores. This is because the way a person handles personal credit and their own credit cards often shows how he or she will manage business credit. Another important metric is debt to income ratio or DTI, which describes your outstanding debt compared to how much you earn. The lower your DTI, the better your liquidity and the more likely you keep up with the timely payments. Follow for part two. For part two, the third C is called conditions. Lenders want to be sure there's a market up for your business. There are times that a sound business plan will not ensure the loan's approval if the economic signs look bad for the near future because they also making sure if your loan is appropriate this time. These questions are prevailing economic conditions favorable for the loan applicant's business. So, make sure your business plan proves that you will be successful based on economic conditions, competition, industry type, and your history as a small business owner. The fourth C is character. This includes your education history, business background, and personal credit history, known as track record and legal history. It includes also any references or other information about your financial situation because banks will do their utmost to paint an accurate picture of your financial background. So if you don't have a steady credit score on your personal side, make sure you get it cleaned up first before you walk into the bank. In short, fix your personal credit first. This also questions if does the applicant have significant experience managing his own or someone else's business? Does the applicant have a successful prior record of playing down other loans? Or do you pay your debts on time? How much outstanding debts do you have? Creditors are looking for stability and reliability. And of course, it helps if you and your staff have a good reputation in your industry. 
Last but not the least, in the five of credit is collateral. Refers to the property that can secure a loan and the lender is going to looking for a way to mitigate that risk. So they can looking for some assets that they can liquidly just in case the loan goes bad. Your loan application should include real estate or other things that could be sold if you fall behind on debt payments. And that assets may be machinery, real estate, or equipment as long as the value of the collateral is larger than the loan. However, borrowers or debtors are often given one-year redemption period before the bank disposes or loan restructuring. And reminder, without collateral, you may get a higher interest rate for your loan or have a smaller approval loan amount. So, those are the five criteria that the lender uses to determine whether or whether to approve a loan or not and how much they will let applicants borrow. And that's for the five C's for you all from your story. They are not things for watching. Follow to know more. Hashtag head of now. So, someone asked, And Miss Ma, how about naman po sa bank questions? Can you give us an example that the banks may ask or their possible questions for? And idea on what to do na rin po. Thank you. Okay, let me explain something. Cheers. So what am I going to share with you guys is from Henry Ong, an entrepreneur's financial advisor contributor, perhaps on the question the banks will ask you. Number one is, how much money do you want to borrow? While this question may appear straightforward, the most straightforward questions are sometimes the hardest to answer. Money lending is a cautious, careful, and conservative industry. Lenders want to see that your firm is similar to theirs in terms of finances. Preferably, you should be able to demonstrate to a lender that you consider a bit detail and are borrowing not only what you want, but also what you need. So one thing that you can do is you must indicate the total amount of the loan in your application by stating it. It can be in the form of a credit line for working capital or secured loans for capital expenditures. Number two is is your business profitable enough and does it have enough cash flow to service the debt? You must show to the bank that your business can generate enough cash flow to service the monthly debt amortization. If needed, a new business owners can show that they been profitable in a comparable business ventures in the past or have a strong expertise and have done their research in the particular industry of the business. Also, it will be saved as a ratio of at least two times interest cover. This ratio is the net income before interest expense divided by the interest expense. Number three is, does your business have a collateral to cover the loan? If not, do you have personal assets to guarantee the loan? Now, if you remember collateral is mentioned as one of the five C's, though for banks, talking over the collateral is the absolute last choice, but it is really needed. What collateral makes to your loan is that it supports your loan. Your business must have tangible assets such as real estate, inventory, merchandise, or equipment. Also, the maximum amount of loan that can be extended to you depends on the value of the collateral that you can pledge to the bank. So, the higher the value of the collateral you have, the higher the maximum amount of loan that the bank can extend to you. Lastly, number four is, does your business have a reasonable balance between debt and equity? Debt capital describes the funds a company has borrowed from a lender in order to finance business activities that will need to be repaid. Equity capital specifically refers to the funds paid into a business by shareholders. Banks avoid lending to businesses that are too entitled. They think that the business with more debt than equity are more likely to default on their loan payments. Consider a maximum debt to equity ratio of 1 to 1. Any ratio lower than that should be considered good. Also, a significantly higher amount of equity ensures that the organization will be able to cover any losses effectively and sustainably. So that's all po. I hope I somehow help with your concerns. Can to talk? Thanks for watching. Follow to know more. Hashtag Edoptop. Well, then I drop it like hot, hot, hot I'll take a feeling so hot You know they burn like hot, 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 hot Well, then I drop it like hot, hot, hot I'll take a feeling so hot Yeah, I'm running too hot, 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 hot 
Hello guys, what's up? It's me, John Rainer, and let's talk about loan products geared to small to medium enterprises. So when we hear loan products, it is a form of debt incurred by an individual or other entity. So the lender, usually a corporation, financial institution, or government, advances a sum of money to the borrower. Certain banks provide loan products that are geared towards small to medium enterprises with comparatively low barriers to access their capital. So if your business meets the requirements, these banks said you might be able to leverage the resources to grow your business. When you are starting and having a financial problem to start your business, you can apply for a loan from a bank, corporation, government, or other entity. You may be required to provide the specific details of course such as the reason for the loan or purpose, your financial history, and other information. The lender will also review the information including a person's debt to income or DTI ratio to see if the loan can be paid back. So based on the applicant's credit worthiness, the lender either denies or approves the application. But if the application is approved, both parties sign a contract that outlines the details of the agreement. Several banks, programs, or financial institutions that offer loan products to small to medium enterprises are Asia Trust Term Loan, DPI Grow Your Small to Medium Enterprises Business Loan, DDP Lending Program for Micro, Small and Medium Enterprises, and also Land Bank Small to Medium Enterprises Unified Lending Opportunities for National Growth. So for example, if you are going to apply for a loan to start your business from BPI Grow Your Small to Medium Enterprises Business Loan, there are certain purposes for easy access to credit for a small to medium enterprises with at least 3 years of business operation. It is used the loan to expand the business, raise capital to purchase, build or renovate commercial property, even residential property to lease or resale, or simply refinance an existing loan or mortgage and if your purpose meet the requirements then they can process your loan but for some banks or other financial institution they have different description in terms of purpose for the amount for a minimum of 1 million pesos with a maximum of 12 years loan term so if you borrow 2 million pesos you need to pay it back as early to not reach the due end of the loan term but for the other banks they can offer an amount of 1 million pesos minimum to a maximum of 50 million pesos per loan but yes it depends on the business that you are going to start and also the resources of the bank and financial institution itself for the security the first condition is the real estate mortgage or other acceptable collateral for them to ensure that you can pay on time a security on a loan is a legal claim on a collateral that the borrower provides that allows the lender to repossess the collateral and sell it if the loan goes bad. Other banks have requirements of continuing surety ship of the principals, deed of assignments of receivables, third-party posts, dated checks, purchase orders, and delivery receipts. The idea behind a secured loan is a basic one. Lenders accept collateral against a secured loan to incentivize borrowers to repay the loan on time. Last but not the least, the interest rates per loan products. 10.75% for 1 year term to 12% for 5 to 12 years. Interest rates are revised periodically. So it may change the interest rates from a period of time. If the loan is fixed interest rate loan, then a bank cannot change the interest rate on the loan for the duration of the loan. If the loan comes with an adjustable rate, then yes, a bank can change the interest rate of the loan. The changes in the rate may be predetermined or may track an index. Additionally, a maximum increase can be set in the terms of the loan. On a specific loan, banks take into consideration the borrower's credit worthiness, which includes their credit score, income, savings, and other financial metrics. So that's it for loan products geared for small to medium enterprises. When you invested in something risky, but ended up getting twice the reward. This video
video is only for those who are wondering about how I achieve my success. First thing I did is I look for investors. So what do you need from investors or why we need to find investors? Investors are looking for these five things. So if you think na isa ka sa mga to, Find investors na kasi kailangan ka nila at lalong kailangan mo sila. Next, why is it important to get investors? Investors play a major and vital role in the success and growth of a company. Because of that fact, it's of the utmost importance for companies to maintain strong and transparent relationships with investors. This is where the investor relations department of a company comes into play. Remember? A business is a marriage between creativity and the proper tools that will make it into reality. It is unfortunate that there are some businesses that die even before they get off the ground because they are unable to find the proper financing. Business owners should know the different options that are available to them. One of the methods of raising capital for a business is called equity financing. Term of the day, equity financing is the process of raising capital through the sale of shares. For most people, the first place to look for money is back, right? But banks are not always enthusiastic when it comes to dishing out loans or other forms of debt financing to businesses that do not have much to show for yet. The reality is that banks also try to minimize the risks they take, so you need to consider equity financing because it is the process of raising capital through the sale of shares. Companies raise money because they might have a short term need to pay bills or have a long-term goal and require funds to invest in their growth. So if you are a business owner or would dream big, don't just put your money in the bank. Invest and invest because that is how equity works and that's how you achieve in life. Unlike loans or debts, it does not create or repayment or interest obligations to investors. But in this case, the trade of lies in the control of the company. Typically, equity can be received in exchange for anywhere between 25 to 75 percent of the company. Those percent used to purchase assets, invest in projects, and fund operations. A PM typically can raise a capital by issuing debt in the form of a loan or via pants or equity by selling stocks. That's all. Thank you. Let's talk about the equity is used when a company is often startups and have a short-term need of cash. It is typical for companies to use equity financing several times during the process of reaching maturity. Here is some advantage of equity financing. Less burden With equity financing, there is no loan need to repay. The business doesn't have to make a monthly loan payment which can be particularly important if the business doesn't have initially generate a profit. This is a turn to give you more freedom to channel more money into your growing business. Credit issues gone. If you lack credit worthiness through a poor credit history or lack of financial track records, equity can be preferable or more suitable than a debt financing. Learn and gain from your partners. With equity financing, you might form informal partnership with more knowledgeable or experienced individuals. Some might be well connected, allowing your business to potentially benefit from their knowledge and their business networks. And that's it. Now you know. Let's talk about the venture capital firm. Venture capital financing is funding are provided to companies and entrepreneurs. It can be provided at a different stage of their evolution. Although it often involves early and seed rounding funding, 
Venture Capital Funds manage pooled investment and high growth opportunities in startups and other early stage firms and are typically only open to accredited investors. Venture Capital has evolved from activity at the end of the Second World War into a sophisticated industry with the multiple players to play an important role of innovation. And that's it. Now you know. Okay guys, let's answer this question. What do you think on how the business is business run? Oh, okay, first of all, because of the venture capital firms are made up of, of industry experts, there is definitely no room for gap in business. Partners are there precisely to winnow the good investments for the bad. The bottom line is that those who are seeking support from, from these firms have to show that the business is workable and thus a worthwhile investment. Okay guys, for our next question. In terms of old adage, is it true that the equity financing is there is no such thing as a free lunch? In the case of venture capital firms, the usual expectation is that returns from the investment can be seen within 5 to 7 years. To ensure profitability, a continuing relationship is also created between the firm and the business once an investment has been made. In fact, is it not usual, unusual for someone from the firm to sit a member of the board of the startup company? In all forms of equity financing, is it not an unreasonable expectation for the investor to be part of the decision-making process? Since investors essentially became partners in the endeavor and thus share in both risk and profit, they have a good motivation to ensure that the company works out well. In uh, equity financing, it creates a measure of risk for the investor as well. In the event that the businesses does not live up to its potential and it goes under, there is no obligation to pay the money back to the investors. One of the reasons why investors place their bets on the young businesses, even those that may be profitable at the time, is that they are looking towards the future. They are usually not out to simply spread the love. Usually, investors sell out their shares of the company after a period of time of a profit. Okay, ayun lang. Bye-bye! Are you going to start up your business? So, this is for you. Here are some requirements that you need to know before you can deal with your investors. First, if you're going to submit to your proposals, you should have a clear structure demonstrating the viability of the business. Make sure to make your business appealing at the same time, practical enough to attract the consumers without them hesitating. According to Kaisan Dehas, that the product might be really cool and differentiated, but what if no one wants to pay for it? Siyempre, bilang isang investors, ayaw mo naman na masaya yung invest mo, di ba? So, aalam mo muna lahat about si Pada, kung papagod pa siya sa masa, kung makakagayin ba siya ng more consumers, at kung worth it ba siya bilhin. Second, the numbers are everything in the world of investing. Without it, the investors will unable to proceed gaining a clear understanding of the company's mission. As a result, the business owners must present a accurate numbers from the company's previous performance. For example, kung matagal ka na sa business industry, syempre aalamin nila kung paano may handle ang isang situation na nagkukos ng issue about si product mo. Kasi, kasi, investors seek out experienced entrepreneurs and management items who have demonstrated excellent performance and demonstrating in the company's industry or previous operations. Most investors will look at your business experience and industry history. So, nag-research na yan sila about sa company mo kaya bawal magsinungaling gaya ng ex mo na may preba na nga ito o din ay pachar. So, syempre, kung nakita naman nila na magaling at maayos ka magpatakbo ng business mo, then why not at di sila mag-invest sa your people? And take note, you should be able to display your competence in the industry. And last, according sa handbook ni David Gladstone entitled Venture Capital Investing, the entrepreneur should be able to make sense of what the numbers mean. If that cannot be done, it, it is a sure sign that the entrepreneur does not live and buy by the numbers. He will therefore be a poor man. 
Terima kasih telah menonton this video. Like and follow me for more video tips. Bye! Sensei, what is an angel investor? An angel investor, also known as the private investor, seed investor, or angel founder, is a high net worth individual who provides financial banking for small startups or entrepreneurs, typically in exchange for ownership equity in the company. Often, angel investors are found among the entrepreneurs' family or friends. The funds that angel investors provide may be one-time investment to help the business get off the ground or an ongoing injection to support and carry the company through its difficult early stages. The term angel comes from the Broadway Theater when the wealthy individuals gave money to the proper theatrical productions. The term angel investor was first used by University of New Hampshire William Wetzel, founder of the Center of Venture Research. Wetzel completed a study on how entrepreneurs gathered capital. Oh, so Sensei, who can be an angel investor? Angel investors are normally individuals who gain accredited investor status. But this isn't prerequisite. The Securities and Exchange Commission defines an accredited investor as one with a net worth of $1 million in assets or more, excluding personal residence, or having earned $200 in income for the previous two years, or having a combined income of $300 for married couples. But now, this is no longer the case due to the new set of laws known as the Jobs Act. Everyone, regardless of their income or net worth, can have the chance to be an angel investor. Every startup needs funding and angel investors could be a viable part of your investment strategy. Here's everything you need to know about angel investors and the pros and cons of working with them. Angel funding isn't a loan. It doesn't require money payments. This can help your short-term cash flow since you won't be adding a monthly loan payment to it. Angel investors are repaid eventually at either an acquisition or when new funding is raised. Angel funding is less formal and more flexible than other types of startup funding. And it doesn't matter if bago lang yung business mo, basta may tiwala sa yung angel investor at nakikita niya yung potential ng business mo. Angel investor also seeks personal opportunity while investing. In this case, you're also curious to learn and witness how business grow. They are also willing to explore and invest on different industries including technology, financial, healthcare, consumer goods, education, government, and energy. Angel investors can network you with potential clients helping you grow your business. Investors can also network you with other startups they have supported which can help form strategic partnerships. In exchange for their investment, most investors expect a share of your profits. This limits your upside potential if your business becomes successful. Angel investors typically receive convertible debt at a premium of 20%. At the next evaluation, investors can convert debt into equity. The more times you raise funds, the more equity you give away in your company. In some cases, original owners become minority owners due to equity given away in angel investments and venture capital investments. As you continue to raise funds through angel investing, you continue to give up your equity in your company. And this means investors increase control of your company. While there are online resources to find angel investors like AngelList and Funders Club, it isn't easy to get investors. In many cases, your best chance to get angel investing is to have an existing business connection with an investor. They already know you and your business, which gives you an advantage over the other startups. If you're relying on angel investors that you don't know, the odds of convincing one of them to invest in your business are significantly lower. In this case, if you have a family or friend na kaya mag-invest sa business mo, it's more easier for you to take a first step. Consider all the factors that I mentioned and speak with your financial and legal advisors before moving forward with angel investments into your business.
everybody, someone asked, what are equity financing expectations? So ayun nga no, aralin natin ang meaning ng equity financing. Bago ang lahat, let's watch a short clip na related about our topic. is not available. When you have finished recording, you may hang up or press 1 for more options. is not available. When you have finished recording, you may hang up or press 1 for more options. Hello, Franny. Then to kasi yon. Uh, nalugi kasi yung business ko, and I'm looking for someone to invest in my business para buhayin at palaguin ko lit yung business ko. Sigap to spyon. Oh, oh, okay. Chinja palyo ako yun. It's okay, Franny. Na intindihan ko naman. Anyway, thank you for answering my call. Oh. Hello, I'm Algin and I want to invest in the business. Why do you want to invest in me? My guts tell me I should. Your what? Guts? I feel like you're worth the gamble with my life. My instincts tell me so. That's interesting. Ayun nga, no? Nag-enjoy pa kayo sa pa-short parody ng Itaewon Class? Siyempre, dapat to. Oh, charot! So, ayun, balik na tayo. Sana all binabalikan. Charot! Ayoko bumalik sa wrong person, no? No, no, no! Iba naman yung sayo, eh. Ang inimain ko kasi, balik na tayo sa topic natin na Equity Financing Expectations. Ayun na nga, according to Banton 2022, the practice of obtaining funds through the sale of assets is called equity financing. So few entrepreneurs will be able to claim success on their own in an increasingly competitive business environment. When you find investors, there are some things you need to expect to each other. Isang critical step ng bawat plano ng isang entrepreneur ay mag-approach ng any type of investor. Ang pinaka-importante sa lahat is that the business owner ay nagkakonduct ng mabusising research para makita if yung objective ba ng isang company ay tugma o align sa investor. Tama ka dyan! Tapos alam niyo ba na ang investments are almost never comparable kasi kada business proposal is unique and kada negotiation ay may kanya-kanyang procedure. Nevertheless, one common thing na lahat ng business owners owners should have is a well-researched plan that is based on actual figures when they meet with possible investors. Plus, kapag nagahanap ka ng investments, you should anticipate to engage in some form of negotiation. The deal's terms, kagaya ng amount of capital and the extent of board involvement ang kadalasan na reason kaya nabibreak yung deal. Para maging madali ang transition, dapat magpay attention sa mga details like how magpa-function yung communication and decision making. Tama! So after the investment, the investors may take an active role in the company's management. Kung ano yung mga napag-usapan during the negotiation, dun madedetermine kung may kung mayroong revitalization or total transformation. And lastly, everyone, let be your ears.
Importante malaman nyo ito kasi malay nyo, maghanap din kayo ng pagsisugalan ng buhay gaya ni Iso ng Itaewon Class. Char! Siyempre, investor! So, ayun na nga. Ito dapat nyo tatandaan. Take notes. Una, set a realistic progress timeline. Pag-isipan mong mabuti ang pagtatayo ng sariling business. Patience is the key. Mula sa pagkuha ng supplier, hanggang sa pag-invest sa stock, siguraduhin na tama ang panahon na, ng bawat move and don't give up on the ultimate vision, which is being number one. Pangalawa, find people that will help your vision. Hindi ka nag-iisa sa iyong pangarap. Piliin mo yung mga taong niniwala at makututulong sa iyo at sasama sa hirap at ginhawa. Pangatlo at uli, business is people. Live with empathy and no biases regardless of diversity and help everyone to believe in success. Sana may natutunan kayo for today's video. Bye! Annyeong! Good day everyone, today we're gonna talk about the reality check on entrepreneurs, especially those who are considering the option of equity financing. So, entrepreneurs who are considering the option of equity financing for their companies should be realistic. It is not enough to have a good idea contrary to proper rules, good ideas do not actually sell. So, what people are actually invest to is the potential to translate into actual profits. So before meeting with investors, the company owners should know what they are getting into. So take a good hard look at your business and how it will fare with the investors around. So the strengths and weaknesses of the company should be identified early on. The truth is, not all businesses have the capability to keep investors happy with their return on investment. For example, those in the restaurant industry are usually not very liquid. Even those that have businesses that are likely to generate money do not always work. So entrepreneurs should be honest enough to see if they are capable of doing what they claim. This goes back to the principle that equity financing is ultimately a business transaction between two parties. So Sandeas emphasizes the point clearly when he reminds business seeking investment to think about how people would respond to what they are offering. So there's a quote saying that products should be backed up by a big market. So that's all for today. Thank you for listening. So since someone asked what is an equity financing, let's get to know the basic of equity financing. So, equity financing is the practice of selling portions or shares of a company to outsider in order to raise money. Equity financing can be received at any point in a business life. However, most investments are done in the early stages of the company. An entrepreneur can avail of equity financing, but those that are high risk with the potential for high returns are preferred. Equity financing can be obtained from various sor sources. Investors range from private individuals called angels to venture capital firms. Entrepreneurs who want to avail of equity financing should prefer a solid business proposal showing the company's potential. So that's it for the basic of equity financing. Hope you understand it. Thank you for listening. Tama ba itong location na sinadya? Baka nasa loob nga lang. Napin ko na lang sa loob. Uy! Pare! Uy! Pare! <laughs> What's up, pare? Ano na? Kamusta ka? Long time ago? No see! <laughs> It's long time no see, pare. <laughs> I see. Ah! Bibiro lang ito eh. Pero have a seat, pare. Ah, sige, sige. Salamat, salamat. Ayan, nodal ko na rin yung favorite mong milk tea na red velvet. Ah, ito ba? <laughs> oh, wow, salamat, pare, ha? So, kumusta ka, pare, ma? Ah, ayos naman ako. Ako pa ba? Eh, go, parang Eric. Kumusta ka naman? Oh, well, I'm goat. Your goat, ibig mo sabihin na kamping ka. Ah, <laughs> hindi, pare. Goat means greatest of all time. Ah, okay, pare. Yan ang ayos. Happy ako para sa'yo. Pero teka, bakit nga ba? Pil ko pag-ibig yan eh. Ah, hindi pare. Sadyang satisfied at well-doing lang kasi yung karil ko. Alam mo yun, yung clothing brand business ko is very successful. Wow, 
Yan ang flex. Ay, pero sana wala. Oh, bakit naman pare? Akala ko ayos ka lang. Ayos naman ako. Ayos, may iniisip nga lang kasi. Eh, ano naman yun? Ayos, eto kasi yun. Alam mo kasi, magbibusiness ako. Alam mo na, yung dati kong bukang bibig sa bunga ako, syempre, na magnenegosyo ako. Ooh, ah. Alam mo yung feeling na prepared ka na, handa ka na, ready ka na. Pero parang hindi pa. Parang may kulang. Hmm, alam mo na yung business mo, di ba? Pero may business plan ka na ba? Meron. Hmm, alam mo na ba yung market mo? Kilala mo na ba yung target customers mo? Oo. Oh. Eh, yung operation ng business. Oo. Oh. How about yung financial? Super, oo. Oh. Alam mo, ready na nga yung pera ko para makapag-start ng negosyo eh. Eh, saan mo itatago? Saan mo itatabi? Hmm, sa bahay? Sa kwarto? Sa wallet? No, pare. Wag. Eh, di saan? Well, listen, pare. Ito ah, isa sa pinakaunang dapat mong gawin when opening a business is to set up a bank account. Bank account? <laughs> El mo to, pare, may ginagamit naman na akong bank account for almost 3 years. Pare, that is your personal bank account eh. Eh ano naman? FYI pare, good accounting practice dictates na dapat you separate your personal bank account from your business account. Kasi? Kasi, this will enable you to properly monitor all business disbursements against your personal expenses. Imagine pare, mag-grocery ka o shopping na gamit yung income ng business mo na dapat yung pera na yun is sumiikot lang para sa business mo. Mas mamamonitor mo yung food or goods, yung shipping, yung materials, at marami pa, di ba? Yung ikip mo yung business-related expenses mo ay talaga namang mas ma-visualize mo kung or baka kasi mas gumagastos ka ng sobra kaysa sa kumikita, di ba? Kaya yung pag-separate mo ng bank account is magiging madali para sa'yo matrack yung business transactions mo. Hmm, oo nga no, kung sa bagay. Pero yun lang pala, mag-open ulit ng bank account for business. Okay, okay, noted. Basic at easy. Pare, madali nang mag-set up ng bank account. Pero yung paghahanap ng right bank, well, it requires some effort. Lo, bakit naman? Di ba pwedeng... Kahit ano na lang? Of course! Hindi. Gaya na lamang pag nag-grocery ka, pare, kinukumpare mo yung quality ng product ng bawat stores, di ba? Ganun din sa bank, need na mag-inquire at i-compare mo yung bank services ng mga banko. Okay. E paano nga ba malalaman kung right bank nga ito? Siyempre, yung bankong responsible sa basic saving accounts to investing instruments, yung may payroll processing, accounts payable processing, tas yung trend na online transactions. At yung malupit dito pare, is dapat may insurance services na kayang suportahan yung business operation mo. Ayos pala eh! Maakas pala eh! So, paano ba yan? Ano ba yung mga requirements? So, eto na nga, yung mga ilan sa banking requirements, makinig ka pare. Well, The right bank is the one that will help you secure the best deal and avoid hassles and unnecessary expenses. Pare, di natin alam. Successful pa sa successful eh. Magkaroon ka ng branch not only here but also in other country. Na kung saan may mga appointments ka or any transaction, international. And of course, magta-travel ka at you need cash anytime, di ba? Then, you should look for a bank that has global presence. Hmm, oo oh, nga no. Pero, kung locally based naman ang business mo at need lang ng personalized service form, bank staff, eh, a small bank will do naman. Wow, bravo. Grabe talaga yung mga isipan mo, no? Advanced thinking na talaga, eh, no? Kaya siguro, successful yung business mo. Pero, sa bagay, may point ka din naman, di ba? Na dapat, mag-apply din ng banko na cover din yung international transactions. I know, right? Pero one thing pa pare, is... Kailangan mo rin i-consider yung location kasi eh ang hirap naman kasi pagpupunta ka sa malayong lugar in where your bank is situated. Paano na lang kung ang laking pera o kasing dala mo? Tapos babiyahe ka nang napakalayo. Eh baka mamaya madukot pa yan eh. Kaya it's better na malapit sa office o establishment mo yung banko para syempre di rin hassle. Tama, tama. Mas mabuti nang maging maingat lalo sa pera, di ba? Ang kaling mo talaga eh, no? Pero ano pa bang mga dapat alamin? Another thing is, i-consider mo din yung different banking hours na malapit sa'yo. 
Here in the Philippines, yung banging hours normally end at 3 p.m. But there are banks open for business from 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. So if your business is in the mall, in particular, the nearest bank may still be open up to 6 p.m. Mm. Okay. Noted, pare. Grabe ko talaga yun, no? Marami kang nalalaman. Pero yun, a good way naman yun. <laughs> Pero noted lahat yan. Salamat, ah. No problem, pare. Pero, sa pagpili ng bank, ay dapat tanungin mo rin sarili mo. Tanungin yung sarili ko? No, ano? Kung yung bank of choice mo ba ay nagpo-provide ng online banking na conveniently can pay your bills, transfer money in and out of your account, and make other money banking transactions? Kung pwede ba or easy ba na ma-download online yung banking reports or records of banking transaction para sa bookkeeping needs ng business mo? Kung ilang branches ang meron yung banko at saan sila located? O sapat ba yung lapit nito kung saan ka nagbibusiness? Trotropahin. Dahi, biro lang, biro lang ka naman o. Pero may tanong ako. Kapag ba nakahanap ka na ng banko, may mga requirements pa rin ba or dapat pang alamin? Good question! Need mo lang i-analyze or maging advanced mindset, especially in terms of services. Lalo na yung bank charges at penalties. Pwede mo namang isearch sa official website ng bangong napili mo eh. At kunin mo yung information tungkol sa types of checking and saving na ino-offer nila. Yung types ng loans at interest rates. And lastly, syempre, yung mga special services na good thing or useful sa business mo. Hmm, goods naman. Pero, di ba pwedeng magtanong sa personal na lang? Well, after doing all the research at nalaman mo na yung service, safety, and convenience aspect ng bank na yun, pwede mo na silang puntaan personally before making your final assessment. I-check mo kung yung tao, teller, or staff is friendly ba or professional ba ang galawan. Observe mo din kung approachable ba yung manager. At para mas malaman mo yung kung ano yung right bank, i-compare mo yung bank service offering sa iba pang competitors sa area na yun nang para mas malinawan ka at makapag-decide ka ng maayos. Oo, naks. Grabe. Ang informative talaga yung sinabi mo, pare. No? Salamat sa'yo, ah. Big thanks. Dahil dyan, alam ko na yung gagawin ko sa pag-open ng business. No, small things. Happy ako, syempre, na panalo ka rin sa karir mo, diba? Anyways, ano nga pala yung business mo, pare? Ah, magbibenta kasi ako, pare. Oo, magbibenta ka pala. Magbibenta ng ano? Ng banana spring rolls with sugar feelings in it. Lah! Turun lang yan, ah! Tama ba itong location na sinadya? Baka nasa loob nga lang. Napin ko na lang sa loob. Okay, share ko lang, guys. So, man ask, buti doon nakapag-decide ka na ng bank? Ano doon yung mga necessary documentation na kailangan? Hey, hey, it's Kalista. Let me explain something. Once you have decided on which bank you refer, and once you have the standard requirements, you must then prepare the necessary documentation for opening one. If you are a business owner operating a single proprietor and already have a trade name, the process is simple. You need to submit to the Banker Department of Trade and Industry DTI, register and present part identification card, your tax identification number, PIN, and an and an ID pictures of the required size and color. Take note that some banks will ask for the latest business permit issued to you by your local government. If you intended to incorporate your business, you will need more documentation and follow a longer of set of procedure. You need to appoint one of your incorporators at the treasurer and he or she can then open a bank account in the bank. Bank requires the submission of the SEC register papers of your business. The initial amount of the deposit must be compliance with the Section 13 Title 2 of the Corporation Code of the Philippines. The Corporation Code requires that for a corporation to be registered at least 25% of the authorized capital stock, it is stated in the articles of incorporation must be subscribed, must be paid up. Paid up capital should be less than 5,000. The 25% paid up capitalization is the amount of required for your business to open on a bank account. Your treasurer under your treasurer's name. 
Once this is done, the bank then issue a bank certificate of deposit which is fee attached to the incorporation papers that you will be submitting to the SEC. It takes a few days of processing time before the SEC issue the certificate of registration. To be able to open a bank account, you will need the certificate together with the secretary's certificate, which is needed to authenticate the authorized signatories, the, uh, the tax identification number of your corporation, and the valid ID of your signatories. Chinang naman! Bye-bye! Program I did a weird weekends episode about rap. Can you remember any of the rap that you did? My money don't jiggle jiggle, it folds. I like to see you wiggle wiggle for sure and make you wanna dribble dribble. You know, riding in my fear, you really have to see it. Six feet two in a compact, no slack. But luckily the seats go back. I got a knack to relax in my mind. Sitting south red red wine. Program. Guys, yung kaibigan ko kasi nagtayo ng business, funeral homes, funeraria, kaso nga lang, wala pa siya naiisip na pangalan, baka may idea naman kayo dyan. I got you, I got you, para hindi masyado malungkot, pwedeng jollibing. Pwede naman, kaso nga lang, dapat yung tunog sisikat, yung tunog makakapag-branch out. Makakapag-branch out. Heaven Eleven! O kaya pwede rin patay to corner. Eh, ba't di na lang kaya sambyok sa lamay? Ano ba? Ano bang klaseng suggestion yan? Dapat siyempre yung madaling matatandaan. Kupin 19. Hindi, palitan mo, palitan mo. Dapat yung tunog pa lang, eh affordable na. Affordable? Eh di Shopee ilibing-ilibing sa unang iyak, cashback agad. O kaya, sleep all you can para tunog sulit. Bakit di na lang die now, pay later? Give a damn about a hater when I feel like it. Not today, yep. not today, oh. not today, not today.